Kipling shudders at the thought of uh, having his book controlled uh, by some merchant in a skyscraper in London that he'll never meet, book agents, mass publishers. Kipling feels like you separate yourself from your book. I mean, this is just just inside necrophilia, your book's lying there, wide open, and vulnerable. Anybody can fuck with it any way they want to. Criticize it. Put it through a paper shredder. Oh, no. um, he's carrying his private journal right now in his Tibetan shoulder bag on the airplane. Your vignettes, he's roughed out about his uh, trip so far. You know, the Burning ghats along the Ganges River. You got a dozen different funeral pyres all burning at the same time. <laughs> That'll focus you on the reality of mortality. Houseboat scene in Benares. <laughs> yeah, fun. Gurus up in Rishikesh. They're famous up there, huh? Ganges River comes thundering out of the Himalayas right at Rishikesh. That's why the yogis like it so much. Uh, he found it a little too, too slick, too smooth. I mean, tried to get into Mahish, Mahish, Rishish, uh, yogi. They wouldn't even let him in. He had to sleep in a cave on the outside by the river. Too smooth. Too, too, much, too much money. Beware of money gurus, as that's what he's learned up about Rishikesh. Yeah. And so he went up to Kashmir. Ooh, the lake, uh, enormous lake with Victorian houseboats. And... But the merchants, he went to Bazaar, they're so aggressive. This Islamic merchants up there turned them off. Too materialistic, not his cup of tea. He just wants to go on the open road and get, you know, mix up with common people again. So he hitchhikes friendly lorry drivers north along the Grand Trunk Road built by the enlightened Akbar the Great. And, um, yeah, he drops down into the fabulous uh, uh, public gardens in Lahore, you know, uh, you know, center of the Punjabi uh, tribe. And uh, in the beautiful botanic gardens, he meets another teenager who invites him to his home. So, yeah, sure, uh, he follows this other new friend into, well, he lives in a slum around a huge fruit uh, packaging Punjabi factory. And, oh, the father uh, in a wheelchair, ooh, can't speak industrial accident in the cannery family just taking care of him for the duration well kipling loves uh, hanging out in this warren of uh, poor people who affectionately call him the white charcy <laughs> roughly translated white hashish smoker from dawn to dusk yeah and uh, he's becoming more at one with and 100% absolutely relaxed around earth people. Revolutionary. This is so not like the British Raj. 100% absolutely relaxed and happy and protected by the common people around him. Yeah. Well, the natives, they, they love this vibration, so they playfully take him to the slum barber shop, and the barber gives him a free shave with his straight razor. <laughs> and then to the bath, the hammam, you clean him, get him cleaned up, you know. And so he spends four days with these wonderful people, and on his way out, he's, he's searching for his salt. So he keeps he keeps moving on, and uh, they slip a big chunk of hashish into his waistcoat pocket as he hits the road north. And uh, 
Well, he crosses the Jhelum River, major river, a bridge built by Akbar, too, and where 23 centuries ago there was a famous uh, battle. Alexander the Great battled King Porus, 326 before the Romans nailed that rebel up on the cross. They knew what to do with him. Yeah, uh, epic turning point in world history because, uh, well, Alexander, even though he won the battle, 23,000 uh, native Indians slaughtered their war elephants, half dead, thrashing in the Jhelum River, clogging it up. What a cleanup to get that going again. Uh, his war-weary troops, they're tired of this. It's been doing this for five years. From Macedonia to the Jhelum River, they said, uh, look, Alexander, we got to talk. Can we go home now? Well, yeah, five years on the road, but what you won't read in any history books is in the middle of that, they took a two-year hookah break <laughs> yeah, in Balk, Afghanistan, outside of Mazar sharif Yeah, Balk, Afghanistan. Made the best hashish in the world, except for the assassin hashish of Hashishan in Persia. Well, Alexander sulked in his tent. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he had a lot of uh, uh, self-identity ego trip riding on conquering India, and now, what? Well, okay. He agreed to, well, he wouldn't call it a retreat. Uh, let's go home. The wine's better over there. So most of his army sailed down tributaries of the Indus River as it winds its way to the Arabian Sea. And that way he could cross Baluchistan. You have no idea where that is. Kind of southern Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alexander didn't make it. He died in Babylon. Yeah, 323 in the Common Era. Mm -hmm. uh, but not all Greeks wanted to go home. I mean... After this adventurous lifestyle, exotic free lands of Asia, you know, that dynamic remnants of troops, leftover generals carving up an independent free kingdom, it's been a tempting dynamic for ego bloated military creeps all throughout history. And these Greek generals, they said, Yeah, you want to go to Baghdad? Eat dust over there. We're staying here. And they're, as they tug their balls, because, well, yeah, it has to do with sex, okay. 